I'd like to give a quick overview of the results that came in just about 12 hours ago um, for those who, of you who haven't quite got to get up to speed on uh, some of these things. So let's start with the congressional races. Now coming into election day, uh, the Democrats were expected to take the House of Representatives and the Republicans were generally uh, expected to keep control of the Senate and that's how it played out. There are 80 races in the House. The Democrats slipped at least 26 and we'll sort of uh, figure out how many more in the final count. Some of those um, were unexpected. The Republicans managed to flip two seats um, and what that means is that we're in for two years of divided government. That means the Democrats in the House have subpoena power that gives them teeth and everything from national security to uh, education regulation at the department. In the Senate, the Republicans flipped at least three sit, uh, seats, and it looks like their net gain should put them at about 53 seats. So they'll keep the Senate and almost have enough to maintain a majority all the way through 2022. The, the big questions are what do these federal changes mean for education and what the Trump administration and Betsy DeVos and the Department of Education might be able to do. But really it's the down ballot races are where the education action is. And this year dominated by teacher strikes, education funding battles, and sort of a surge in teacher activism um, leaves a lot of room for discussion in the down ballot. So let's talk some governors. Uh, in Florida, Ron DeSantis, defeated narrowly Andrew Gillum. Andrew Gillum was pushing for um, more education spending in Florida uh, by legalizing marijuana, but it looks like DeSantis yeah. took him out. Uh, in Kansas, where Ed, was a very, Ed spending was a very serious issue following a state Supreme Court ruling mandating that the state raise its spending, uh, Republican Chris Kobach, who was uh, sort of expected to win and promised to fight that ruling, he was defeated by Democrat Laura Kelly, who was willing to comply. Uh, in New Mexico, Michelle Luan Grisham defeated Republican uh, Steve Pierce. Now, both of these candidates wanted to take apart the state account education accountability system. It just happened that Grisham wanted to take more of it apart. She also <laughs> took the seat. Um, in Arizona, Doug Ducey fended off uh, education professor from ASU, David Garcia. Ed funding here was another big issue, again. Uh, in a state where Arizona teachers went on strike for a week and were given a 20% raise. Uh, in Oklahoma, another state with a strike that was settled by raises, uh, Kevin Stitt uh, defeated Drew Edmondson. Again, he was ready to push back on those uh, tax hikes for those raises. The teachers unions had sort of two candidates, two governor candidates, vying for public enemy number one spot, uh, and both were defeated. Scott Walker fell to Tony Evans, the Democratic state superintendent of uh, education. And this after, you know, a good 10 years ago, uh, Walker pushed through Act 10. And then Bruce Rauner, who's also vying for that top spot, um, was easily defeated by J.B. Pritzker. Rauner was the governor behind the Janus decision that the Supreme Court uh, dealt a serious blow to the unions this year. In Colorado and Minnesota, uh, Democratic governors prevailed over uh, Republicans who were uh, somewhat leaning into school choice. There's a couple of state chiefs races that we don't hear about too much, but they're very interesting. Um, and both are too close to call at this point. A $50 million state superintendent of education in California race between two Democrats. Marshall Tuck, who was a charter school leader, not necessarily a friend of the teachers unions, and a more traditional candidate, Tony Thurmond, who had union backing, Tuck had a slight lead, but it's still close to call. And then in Arizona, a more traditionally red state, Kathy Hoffman, who's been backed by the union, was up against Republican Frank Riggs. Um, and if Kathy Hoffman wins, she'll be the first statewide Democratic office holder in Arizona it, since 2008. That also is too close to call. Uh, look to state legislatures. A lot of people hoping or expecting for a blue wave thought that would show up in the state legislatures. And there was movement for Democrats. In New York, Maine, and Colorado, the Senate houses flipped, uh, the House flipped in Minnesota, and both chambers flipped for Democrats in New Hampshire. Uh, the only win for Republicans in a state house was in Alabama. Here's the main line from this. There is one state, uh, there's one state government where the houses have divided government, and that's Minnesota. One state government. That's, that's a big deal. In, uh, as far as referenda go, there are a couple that, where voters got to speak directly to education. In Arizona, uh, voters resoundingly defeated a um, 
referendum on the state's legislation to expand its ESA or school choice program. And in South Carolina, voters um, voted to continue to be able to vote for the state superintendent and not to have the governor appoint it. And in a number of states from New Mexico to New Jersey, states pa uh, voters passed increased spending measures for K-12 and higher ed. Whew. In an election where education wasn't supposed to be a big deal, we got a lot to talk about.